when we're defensive, we've got less energy for engaging proactively with whatever it is that we're actually trying to do. And defensiveness kills collaboration. So let's take a look at it. Legendary family therapist Virginia Satir laid out four defensive stances that she saw in how people relate to each other. I'm Rich from Let's Go, and when we're thinking about good collaboration, we need to add in one more. So that is five defensive stances. Now, all of them are things we can notice in other people, and maybe more importantly, we can start to notice in ourselves. The first stance is one we all know, blaming. And when we're in a blaming stance, our energy is going into deciding who's at fault and making it loud and clear that it's definitely not us. The second stance is placating. And when we're placating, we're orientated around what the other person wants to hear or what we imagine they want to hear. And we're avoiding conflict or opposition at all costs. The third defensive stance is distracting. And this is anything that takes focus away from what actually needs attention. The fourth defensive stance is being over-logical. You see, reality is often complex. There are different agendas, feelings, ways of looking at things. And when we're over-logical, we retreat from that reality into a fiction where every issue can be logically deduced. The final defensive stance is posturing. And this is where our energy is going into managing our reputation and how we're seen, rather than just letting that be a natural result of what we do. So, five defensive stances. Blaming, placating, distracting, overlogical, and posturing. Now, if we were under attack and in real danger, a defensive stance makes a lot of sense, but it always comes at a cost. And if we want effective collaboration, these are unhelpful ways of engaging with each other. So we can notice these stances in others, but the powerful question is to look in ourselves and honestly ask, which do I take the most often? Why do I do that? What's going on that makes me choose that stance? And what's the impact? Does it actually help me get what I want? The goal here isn't to blame ourselves for blaming or placate ourselves that know we're entirely justified in being defensive or distract ourselves or get over logical about this model or obsess about how others see us. The goal is to see that it is possible to take a stance that isn't defensive, a stance that is curious about the world and others and that of course knows we don't see everything but is willing to say what we do see. Virginia Satir called this leveling. Can we level with each other? And as much as anything else, this is what makes relationships work. Because when someone levels with us, we know where we stand, whatever it is that they say. You see, Martha Beck said, nothing sounds as good to the soul as the truth. And leveling has that refreshing, grounded quality. And when we're brave enough to take our own guard down, actually other people start to feel that it's safe to take their guard down too. And this is where leveling can begin. All of this is much easier to say than to do. And there's much more we could say about how we start down this road individually and collectively. At Let's Go, we see that it's often the human dynamics that get in the way of our best work. And better collaboration is not only possible, it's vital. Now, if you wanna start these conversations in your organization, a good place to start might just be to share this video. But if you wanna go a little deeper, then get in touch.